I'd like to introduce Laura Miller with Plainus. She's a head coach in Michigan, right? Um, and also Jess Berta, who is uh, working with the Badgers, uh, director of brand, branding for the Badgers. Brand, yeah, brand communications. And Jess is my forwards coach at the high school boys level. I always love it when she packs down with the boys and beats it. Beats them up. <laughs> and again, a national champion as a player for the women's Wisconsin Rugby Club. So I'll leave it to you, ladies, and thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Um, like you said, I'm Coach Laura Miller. I'm the head coach at Aquinas College, and I am not Rosalind Chow, um, who you probably thought you were going to speak with today and get to meet today. Um, I know that in your packet there is listed a conversation about women's empowerment um, and diversity in sport. And this morning I got wrong this great presentation and it is not focused on that. Instead, it is focused on the college rugby landscape, specifically in women's rugby. So I know that you guys came to see a specific presentation. So I'd like to hear from the group. What are you guys interested in hearing about? Can I give a show of hands if you would like to hear about the college rugby landscape and the difference between varsity athletics versus clubs, all the gray area in between. Um, and we can speak about the recruiting process and what to expect as a varsity athlete. Or to learn more about um, you know, women's empowerment and the role of rugby in developing women. So can I get you a know, show of hands for varsity rugby and learning about the college rugby landscape and college rugby recruiting? Okay, a little bit. Okay, actually, that's a good amount. So that's about half of the group, okay? Um, so we'll stick with this for the start this morning, and then we'll also sort of add in some of our own experiences and, and focus on women's rugby and the growth of the game and how that's really impacting all of you. I see a lot of young people. So just to give you a little bit of information on me, um, my name is Coach Laura Miller. I'm a head coach at Aquinas College, um, but I've been in rugby for a long time. So I started playing when I was 14. I see, I met a couple of you guys this morning and I saw some of you guys were freshmen. So that's when I started playing rugby. I played rugby all through college. I played in the WPL, which is the Women's Premier League, the top 10 teams in the country for about six years. And by summer after graduating college, I was capped with the USA Eagles. So I spent about six years competing as an Eagle. When I retired from national team play, I went straight into coaching. So I went straight to Life University where I was an assistant coach, where I met Coach Rosalind Chow, who was my boss. So I'm pretty used to, you know, getting thrown the ball from her and saying, you know, run with it, right? From there, I went on and I worked at Alderson Broadus University where I was the head coach for the men and the women for three years and I founded that program and started from scratch. Those are both varsity teams. And from there, I'm starting a brand new varsity women's team at Price College. We are launching competition next fall. So if you guys want to learn about our program, come talk to us in the room later on today. But we're going to chat a little bit about college rugby landscape and a little bit of the information we have up here. So first is, let's get a big picture, right, of what the college rugby landscape looks like. What is recruiting like? How do I get recruited to a college team, whether it's a club team, a varsity team, or something in the middle? What are tips for high school coaches? How can coaches set their players up to be successful in joining these teams? Um, tips for student athletes? What do you guys need to do starting now, starting right at the beginning of your college experience, uh, your high school experience, to not just get recruited, but to find the best fit for you? Finding the right fit. So just because a team has a varsity program, that does not necessarily mean you should go play for them. Just because you get offered a scholarship does not necessarily mean you should go play for them. There's a lot of factors involved in your decision-making process, and I see it all the time when a student gets a, an athletic aid offer and they get really you know, excited, big-eyed, and they want to you know, jump at it, but I really want athletes to be aware of all of the differences of all of our programs and that fit for college is the most important factor. When we talk about fit, and there's a lot of um, nuance to how you can find the right fit for you, okay? Um, finally, coach experiences and, and Q&A. So, from us, what are we looking for as coaches, um, and how can you guys communicate with us in a way that's beneficial? Okay. Okay. So I'd like to start, just pull the group. I see a lot of young people. Um, how many high school students in the room? High school, okay, good amount. This group here, this group here. 
Out of the high school group, how many of you guys are junior or senior? Yeah, okay, maybe a little bit more than half. That's right. So if you're a junior or senior, uh, this is a process that if you're interested in playing varsity rugby that you're either actively doing right now, or you should probably be just starting, right? And I saw Karen just walking to the back. She's a great college counselor um, speaking at this event also, so I think she should go to one of her sessions. Um, I have this. <laughs> does anyone, can anyone just show of hands, when I say varsity rugby, what do you think I'm talking about? Can someone raise their hand and just say some adjectives? What do you think a varsity program means? Yes, funded by the school. Funded by the school. All right, what else? There's a lot more to it, right? That's huge. <laughs> Very important. What else? What does it mean to be a varsity athlete? Yes? You're the best. Maybe, right? You definitely are competing at a higher level, right? You're competing in terms of a daily training environment more than maybe what another team might do. Um, what other adjectives, right? What, what, as a player, what might you have to do as a member of the varsity program? Thoughts? It's competitive. Competitive, right? Um, it's something that is a part of your daily life, very likely. And, and there's a lot of nuance. Every program's a little bit different. We're going to talk about that. Um, I was speaking to some of the people who showed up earlier to this uh, session and, um, you know, ask them, um, you know, what do you know about this topic? Um, and the answer is, you know, when it's looking at all these different variations on, on programs, ask the coach. Ask the coach. Is it a varsity program? Is this a university-sponsored athletic program? Is it sponsored with aid or without aid? Is it an elevated club? The coach knows better than anybody else where the program stands. And I'm going to mention some individual programs today, but I'm certainly not an expert on any program that is not my own. So I might mention a program fits into one of these categories, but ask the coach, right? Because these things are pretty fluid and changing. Okay. Okay. So the collegiate rugby landscape. There's a, a, a lot of um, variation, as I said, in terms of type of program. So. Some of the things that I that I asked about, what do you think about a varsity program, right? Um, yes, it resides in the university's athletic department. That means it's funded, right? That means that the university is paying some amount of money for this program to exist. It is governed by a non-USA rugby governing body that has some sort of regulation over the program, whether it is the NCAA or the NAIA. The NAIA is similar to the NCAA collegiate governing body, okay? Um, full-time coaching staff with compensation. Now, this one, you know, it changes again depending on the program. I know of full varsity programs that have part-time coaching staff. I know of full varsity programs that have a full-time head coach and, you know, volunteer assistants, right? I know of programs where everyone is full-time and it's their only job. So this is, again, a question where you ask the coach if this is important to you. Academic support for athletes. If you are a varsity athlete, what you can expect is that you're going to have some kind of academic requirement outside of what you would have if you were not a varsity athlete. Um, and you may have resources available to you that are not available to non-student athletes. So this is something that is both part of your time management as a young person, and it's also something um, that might be an advantage, but really help give you structure right, being a varsity athlete. Um, you will very likely have access to dedicated facilities, access to a weight room, medical care, and coverage. So just like you have your own health insurance, and then when you sit with USA Rugby, they're giving you secondary health insurance. The exact same thing happens with college. You have a secondary set of health insurance that's added on top of your primary insurance. You still need to have your own primary insurance. In some cases, athletic scholarships. There's variation. Many programs do offer athletic aid. Most of them do not offer full rights. It's very, very rare in our sport that there are full rights. Most of the scholarships are quite small, right? Just a couple thousand dollars. And some programs don't offer any athletic aid at all. If they're an NCAA Division III school, there's not going to be any athletic aid associated with this at all, okay? And a high-performance environment, creating strength and conditioning. 
Now, high performance is one of those terms that everyone kind of has a different definition of what it means, right? Everyone has a different idea of what high performance means specifically. Same thing with varsity. That's the term varsity in college athletics can mean different things depending on who you talk to. But when we say high performance environment, we're talking about a dedicated training environment where it is one of your jobs is to be a rugby player. You're expected to show up to a certain number of trainings a week. You're expected to show up to coach feedback sessions, player meetings, strength and conditioning, um, working with an athletic trainer um, on a daily or weekly basis, depending on your injuries or you know, what you need as an individual. So a varsity program requires a, a pretty large time commitment, right? You're always a student first. Your job is always to be a student before anything else. But if you're in a varsity program, rugby is the next thing. Right? It's the next thing that's significant for those of time. And many students will have a job in addition to this. They might have other commitments, so family commitments, you know, all sorts of stuff. But those two things really are the primary focus of a varsity athlete's life, academics and um, being a student athlete. Okay? So university sponsored programs with me. You're going to hear about scholarships coming up a lot in this conversation because it's a huge piece of the conversation, right? Can we make college affordable for you? And the reality is that rugby can supplement a good amount of aid for individuals so that you can go to the school of your choice that maybe you can go to otherwise. So has anyone heard of schools that maybe call themselves university supportive of aid? Any ideas in schools that might fit this category? What about varsity programs? Any idea listing some teams that call themselves varsity? I know, I know you guys have heard of some. There's a bunch in that room over there, right? That you probably met this morning. So, what did you say? What did you say? Penn State is actually not on this slide yet. We're going to get to know the next one. So they are a school-supported program. To my knowledge, does not offer aid. But like I said, you always defer to the coach because these things can change, right? So varsity programs include any women's team in Naira, any NCAA teams. Those are Division One, Two, II, and Three in Naira. Um, Aquinas College is a varsity program. Adrian College in Michigan is a varsity program. <coughs> Marion College which is the men's team. Is in the other room, is a varsity program. Now, university sponsored with aid will usually reside in the university's rec sport or student life department. What do you guys think might be some of the differences between being in an athletic department versus rec life, rec sports or student life? Any ideas? What might, yeah. I know the university sponsored with aid is a lot more uh, relaxed. And it's usually run by the team rather than the coach. Can be. Yeah, yes, can be. definitely. And so the, you can't always ask the coach, right? How much of this is run by the players? How much of this is run by uh, the team, right? So there are several uh, university sponsored with the programs that will give you some kind of scholarship. That might be an alumni funded scholarship, that might be a school funded athletic scholarship, but they are under rec sports and not in the athletic department. So the one thing that you did say was that it's a little more relaxed, right? So these governing bodies, the NCAA and the NEIA, are not involved, <coughs> right? They're separate programs. And they're considered clubs very often, right? Um, they may have academic support. They may have athletic aid, right? They probably have a high performance environment if they have a full-time coach. Um, and very often they have dedicated now, university sponsored with no aid, very likely they're governed by USA Rugby. They could also be an NCR, there's a little bit of, you know, in the weeds there. They may have some full-time staff. They may have access to facilities. They might have a high-performance environment. And the governing, you know, can change, right? But, like, what does this all mean for you guys, for the young people in this room, for your experience? Any thoughts like on the difference between being a varsity athlete versus maybe a school sponsored but no scholarship athlete? Any thoughts? What's the difference between receiving a scholarship to attend college and, and not? Yeah. 
Any thoughts? Academics. Academics? What do you mean? Um, you're highly ranked. I mean, you have to have a certain standard to play in varsity. Yes, right? So being in a varsity program, you have to stay academically eligible, right? And if you do not stay academically eligible, you could lose a to be a partner. If you are in a program that is sponsored or is an elevated club, you may or may not have those standards. Those depend really on the program, right? But if you are receiving a scholarship to be a part of a program, what that means is that you are uh, essentially being paid, right, to be part of the team. That's why it's part of your job, right, as a student athlete. Now, again, we're going to get into the weeds, and what you see here is that the commitment level goes from being a lot of hours a week to maybe being fewer hours a week. Again, it depends on, depends on the program. So an elevated club resides under a university's rec sport or student life department, just like the last two categories. Um, you might have access to facilities in the weight room. <coughs> you might have coaching staff compensation. You might have um, coaches or volunteers, right? So what we're seeing is a full varsity program with professional coaching staff with, with high, high expectation for your time. Um, and you know, as these programs change in terms of their elevation, the commitment level to the team uh, and time commitment can change. And so as a student athlete, being aware of how much rugby do I want in my life is really important when you're looking at this. Do you want to be a practice every single day? Do you want every single one of your weekends to be a rugby game? Right? If you do, it, yes, you should be looking at varsity programs, right? So club teams, these are probably the biggest group, right? Anyone have an idea, get, throw some hands up for a club rugby program that you know, college club rugby program that you know. Yes? University of Oshkosh. Oshkosh, all right. Anybody else? Club rugby teams, college club rugby teams. I know Stephen Point is an Stevens Point. Awesome. Any other club rugby teams? Blackville. Blackville. Okay. Awesome. Great. So, what is the difference between being a part of one of these club rugby programs and being a part of an elevated program in any capacity? Right. There's a bunch of different ways we just went through to elevate a program, um, but in terms of like the player experience, the time commitment. What do you guys know about those programs? What is the experience like for athletes? How about you guys? What's the experience like as a part of a club program? It's way less of a commitment to yeah. do every, like, during your week. But what's your experience like? I mean, I'm assuming it's fun, right? You like yeah, being on a team. Yeah. So what do you like about it? Um, I don't know. I'm, it's like a really good experience with all the like, girls on our team and everything. Um, what do you guys think? Why are, why are you a part of this club? Well, there's not as many expectations. Um, yeah, so come as you are, right? It's it's a welcoming environment. It's something that you want to be a part of, and it's an extracurricular. It's just you know, a club that you're a part of, right? So all of these different varieties of, of, of elevation of program, all of them are incredibly important to the college rugby landscape. And it's all about the individual student and what is your fit for college rugby. How much rugby do you want? Do you want to be, you know, essentially doing rugby as a job, right? So here we've got some questions that you should yes. I would also like to acknowledge that a lot of times in the clubs, it's the students totally running. Yes. So while to be a player, it might be come and, come and go. You you have to have a core bunch of of people who run the club. Yeah. So a club is a student run program. Right? There is no professional coaching staff. And there are some huge benefits to that. I mean, I played for a college club. When I graduated from college, my resume was full of all of the things that I did at running this club, right? It can be a huge resume, resume booster. But it's important to be aware when you're joining a college, if you're picking a college for a rugby team, what is that club like? How do they behave? Are they a club that is um, organized, that is really you know, trying to have a team together? Are they a club that's more of a social club, right? And and those things are individual to you and what are you looking for in your program? So questions to ask. What is best academic fit? Right? Every college has different academic requirements and like I said at the beginning, very often students get really excited when they're being recruited by a coach and maybe just 
take the first offer that they get because, oh my God, this is a varsity team and they want me to play for them. And that's incredibly exciting. And you should be proud of that. But is that school an academic fit? Does it have the major that you want? Does it have the campus experience that you want? It's not just that academics. Do you feel at home on this campus? You're going to spend four years now, right? Is this the level of commitment and sport that you want? Varsity program, do you want to be training every day? <clears throat> Club team, do you want a team where you're going to be running the administration, right? Do you want a team you might only train two days a week and you have to do your own lifting, right? You have to work out on your own, but you get to leave with this great resume of administrative skills and great friendships when you guys all get it together, right? Uh, if rugby was no longer in the equation, would you want to go to this school? And I think that's one of the most important questions because that can't happen, right? You can get there and decide either rugby's not for you anymore, the commitment is what you want, maybe there's an injury, right? But you're still there. And so do you want to be at that school even if rugby is completely off out of the picture? So any questions about these various programs? various types of, of teams. You know, I know that it can feel like you're really in the weeds with a lot of this, and that's why I keep coming back to ask the coach. If there's a program, a school that you think is a fit for you, go find the coach and ask them a question. And I'll tell you, you know, I recruit high school athletes all the time, it's my full-time job, and we want to talk to you. We really want to talk to you. We want to know if you're a fit for us, and that starts with having a conversation. So don't be afraid, don't be worried, we definitely want to get to know you and learn if you're a fit for our program. So, recruitment practices for college. This is going to vary, I guess, depending on the school. So, uh, as a club team, how do you guys recruit? Uh, we usually have like a, like a breakfast thing where a bunch of clubs come together and they have like a So you have like a college fair at the beginning of the year and you're recruiting students who are already on campus. Right? Are there any other ways you recruit, or is that your primary? Uh, that's my primary. You, social media to recruit? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. But for the most, these guys are recruiting teams, players that already came to their school. Right? They're, and, and I'm sorry, what program are you a part of again? Uh, Stevens Point. Stevens Point. Awesome. So students who chose Stevens Point and maybe have or haven't played rugby before can come out and join the team. Right? A lot of the other variations on, on rugby are going to recruit you out of high school. and also recruit on campus. So for my program, I primarily recruit from high school, but I also recruit on campus. But our off-campus recruiting is much more specific, right? Can this student handle the academic load and the load as a student athlete? Uh, is the student physically healthy and prepared to compete at college level rugby, right? So it's a little bit different for a varsity level program. So who do we recruit? Next, what are the methods of recruiting? Right, we just talked about a college fair, um, my recruiting process is much more formal, right? It involves having a Zoom call with your family and me, and we sit down and talk about our program and you and then what's important for you. Um, it includes maybe attending a camp. Um, it includes a financial aid process. It includes a lot of pieces, including the application and your essay and, and all of that, right? Much more formal process. When is it appropriate to recruit? This one is really important because as we reach varsity status, this changes depending on the team and the program. So if you're being recruited by an NCAA program, there's gonna be rules around when they can talk to you and when they can't. I am not a part of an NCAA program, but I was for a few years. And so I understand some of the requirements. If a coach doesn't talk to you because they say, hey, I'd love to have this conversation, but we're in a dead period, all that means is that there's a rule that says they can't talk to you right now. It doesn't mean that they don't want to talk to you. It doesn't mean that they're not interested in you. It just means there's a regulation that prohibits them from chatting with you. So many NCAA programs, specifically D1 and D2, cannot talk to athletes while you're competing. So if I come to a tournament as a non-NCAA coach, and you want to come up to me in between a seventh match and ask me about my program, I can talk to you. But if I was not, if I were an NCAA coach, I would have to say, hey, you know, there's a regulation. Um, I'd love to talk to you about this when you're dismissed at the end of the day. 
NCAA coaches for D1 and D2 cannot speak to athletes while they're competing. Division three coaches can, right? Again, a lot of gray area. Always ask the coach if you run here. Uh, NCAA Division one and Division two uh, cannot speak to you if you are younger than a junior. So the date is typically June fifteenth, the summertime. That is when you become a junior from your sophomore year. So if you're a sophomore and you're talking to college coaches, watch your email mid-June, because it might blow up, right? You might all of a sudden get all of these NCAA programs wanting to talk to you and they've had to wait because you've been a sophomore, right? Again, it depends on the varsity program. I'm permitted to talk to folks at any time. Uh, Division three programs can talk to younger, younger students. Um, it just depends, right? Where do we recruit? Where do you guys think you could find a coach to talk to or to get recruited? What are some, maybe your high school coaches have told you or you've got an idea of where you can get recruited? Or maybe coaches have an idea. Any thoughts? Saw a hand up? Tournaments. Tournaments? Do you ever see college coaches hanging out at rugby tournaments, watching the games? Where else could you get recruited? Maybe a practice? College coaches might come to your practice. Could you get recruited at this event? In the take room next door? Yes. You're gonna 100% get recruited at this event. There's a bunch of varsity coaches right through this wall. Tomorrow there is a combine. It will be full of college coaches who want to talk to you, right? And there is very often sort of a fear that I notice in high school athletes of being a little bit nervous of the coach. Remember, we're here because we want to recruit you. Right? We want to talk to you. We want to learn your fit for us. So if you're interested in the program, please come up and chat with us because we want to learn more, right? We want to find out if you're a fit for us. Okay. And why do you think college programs look good? There's the obvious, like we have to have a team, right? We have to build a roster. It's really important. But what do you think makes us go out and seek out the right fit for our program? What do you think we're looking for in incoming athletes? Yes? I would say ultimately we want a good environment for the sport to grow. Yeah. Uh, we love our teams, right? Every coach, every player, everyone knows that we love and care about your team. And we really want to bring in people who reflect the values of our program. And so, sure, we're going to go to the combine tomorrow and we're going to see all of your times for all the testing that you do. And we're going to ask you about your academic interests and make sure it's a fit for our school. But the question really is, do you want what we want, right? Do you want to be a part of a program at a varsity level that's there to compete, right? Or if you're going to play at the club level, do you want to be a part of a team that values what that team values? Whether it's being a family, being inclusive, being a competitive team, doing it yourself, Right? All of those things are incredibly important. So this is why the recruiting process matters. The recruiting process matters because we want to make sure that when you go to a college to play rugby, that you're going to stay there for four years and graduate and have a great experience. That's what everybody wants, right? Now, how do we do it ethically? We're going to talk a little bit. We've got some answers to these questions um, on the other side of the slide. Um, I talked a little bit about um, you know, some of the um, rules that it's your play coaches or other coaches might have. Um, but in terms of, of how to do it ethically, um, maybe high school coaches in the room or anyone have any thoughts on what are some priorities for recruiting ethically as a coach and also as a player? What are some things that are red flags? Any thoughts on like, you know, maybe um, you know, something that, you know, that doesn't quite fit with what you want or looking for in terms of a recruiting process, okay? So when it comes to recruiting ethically, we're talking to minors, right? For the most part, we're talking to 17, 16 year old young women and men before recruiting. And so most college coaches are gonna start with an email. Emails are traceable. Emails are something that are easy to handle. We can add, it's either email the parent or CC the parent onto that email, right? We've, there may be text messages that we send out to athletes, but we try as much as possible to add um, a parent onto that text message, okay? We also use uh, recruiting forms. We're gonna ask you the best way to communicate with you. 
and it might say on that recruiting form, you can text me. That's totally fine. But for the most part, that's gonna come from an admissions office, right? You're gonna hear from an admissions counselor. And if possible, including your parent phone number so that your parent can be added to that text message as well, okay? If we're talking to minors, we wanna make sure that we're always including the parent whenever possible in our So again, who are we recruiting? We're looking for athletes that fit the program goals. We want athletes who are gonna be uh, in line with what we wanna do as a program. So I'm starting a team from scratch. I want athletes who wanna start a team from scratch, right? I want athletes who wanna help build something and have a really great experience building something, not necessarily jumping into a high level of competition, okay? Uh, what methods are we gonna use? Student athlete centered and effective methods. So a lot of coaches run camps. Those camps are very student athlete centered. It's all about player development. We want to, you know, invite athletes to experience life on our campus, and we want athletes to uh, be at the center of the experience. It's not about the coach, it's about the player, and is this a fit for you? Okay. When is it appropriate to recruit? It might be based on the NCAA. It might not be. It's also, you know, when is it appropriate to recruit? If an athlete tells me they're not interested, it stops being appropriate for me to recruit them, right? If they say, thank you so much, you know, I've moved on to other options, I either, you know, just take them off my list or I respond back and I say, thank you so much for considering us, I wish you the best, right? That's that. Where to recruit? So it might be geographic. I'm very fortunate. There is so much high school going from here in the Midwest. I spent the last six months traveling all over the Midwest, meeting all kinds of folks from all different programs, and we're recruiting very geographically, very focused on this region. But not every program does that. A lot of programs go big picture all over the world, right? And I recruit international students as well, but you know, it doesn't necessarily have to just be in your region. And you don't have to just look at schools in your region. Make sure to look for programs all over the United States, because at this point, we're popping up everywhere, right? Programs where you can be recruited to. So again, the recruiting process, why is it important? It centers the student athlete and it provides opportunities. So very often I find athletes who you know, want to come to my school. My school might be their first choice and financial aid is the key pivot to whether or not they can come. And we have academic scholarship, we have federal aid, but the piece that allows them to attend is that rugby scholarship that we're able to fit in. And the goal for most coaches is to make sure with our academic and athletic aid, that we can make our school possible for you, if that's what you want. So it's not about getting a full ride, it's not about how much your scholarship is, it's about how is it, has it become possible through rugby for you to attend your first grade school. That's really what this is about. And again, how to do it ethically? Are we centering the student athlete? Is the student athlete leading the conversation? So like I said, usually the first thing I do is I want to set up a Zoom call. I want to set up a Zoom call, and ideally that Zoom call includes the parent or the guardian or some family member. Now, it's a little bit tricky in rugby, right? Because I might be going to an event like this, and I might be given a list of emails and some numbers and no parent contact information, right? And so it's really challenging as a coach. I always want to make sure I'm including the parent in the conversation, but that's not always entirely possible. So if you're a high school coach, I highly encourage you, if you're giving out your students' contact information to a coach, include the parent contact information. We really want that as well, okay? So how are we centering the student athlete? Is this the student athlete's decision? Do you feel like you're getting any kind of pressure, right, to choose a certain school, either from family, from a team, you know, whatever it is. Are you making the choice that is right for you based on your academic needs, based on the type of rugby environment that you want, and is the campus a fit for you? Tips for high school coaches, all right. Player profiles, preferred means of communication. Is film important? Accurate evaluations, and opportunities to be seen by our recruiters. So we'll go through a few of these. So player profiles. Raise your hand, how many of you guys have heard of Next Phase Rugby? A couple people. Next Phase Rugby is a new platform. It's the first one that we have as a rugby community that's designed to connect players to coaches, to college coaches, 
not just our state coaches, coaches all across the country of all different types. This platform, the thing I love about it, is it's student center and it's secure. So I'm on there as a coach, right? And I can go and look at your profile and I can see your GPA, I can see a test score, I can see your film link, I can see what you're interested in, I can see all kinds of information about you. What I can't see is your contact information. And the only way I can get your contact information is if I request it and you say yes. That person can have my contact information. So you're at the center, yes. What is this called? Next phase rugby. So the, the reason that I, I love that is because you're at the center. So if you're not interested in my school, you don't have to say yes. You can just ignore me or delete that request, right? And you don't have to talk to me. In addition to that, the parent contact information is listed, right? Because now I can see them on every email, or if I send you a text to say, hey, I thought you were jumping in a Zoom call, and you know, you're not there, so I can text both you and your parent at the same time, right? So that's wonderful. A player profile, I get sent player emails all the time, right? With a film link, maybe some test scores, your GPA, and some things that you think might be important to me, like your interests, right? We love getting those emails because it tells me that you're interested in my school. Um, out of these, let's say the bottom three things, GPA, test scores, film link, what do you think is the first thing most coaches look at? Just a guess. What do you think is the first thing a coach looks at of those things up on the board? Phil? Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Everyone think Phil? GPA. GPA? Absolutely, without question, GPA is going to be the first thing a coach looks at. And the reason is, I want to know if you can get in to my school, right? I want to know if you're going to be an academic fit. Are you someone who's going to come here and be ready for college and be able to move on in four years after graduating, right? If you send me film, I will absolutely watch it. But I will tell you that the gap in competition level from high school to college is pretty large. You're going to get to college, and you're going to grow so quickly as a player. You're going to learn so much um, right away. You're going to be a completely different athlete after a semester at a, at a university program than you were in, in high school, right? So I'll watch your filming, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Can you think, because it seems like a lot of people are kind of new to that. Sure. So could you take 30 seconds and explain maybe like if someone doesn't know what they could put in a film like, yes. like what that might look like or what you guys could look for or create for yourself? What I recommend is finding a game that you think is your best game at a position you identify with. So if, if you, maybe you're playing the same position every single week, right? If that's the case, send what you think is your best game, send a whole game. Send the entire game, not just a highlight reel if you can. If you want to make a highlight reel, go for it, right? Send it to me, that's great. Uh, but I know that highlight reels can be edited to look amazing, right, no matter what. And I want to see how you behave for 80 minutes, right? I want to see, were you a player that was in support after your teammate ran for a try? Were you a player that took the water over to your kicker, right, after um, your team scored, right? Are you a player that when you're on the sideline, I can see and hear you cheering from the camera on the other side of the field, right? Those are the things we're looking for. When I go to games, I'm, of course I am watching the game, but I'm watching how you behave, how you talk to each other, how you move around the field. That's really what we're watching. Because the level of play changes so dramatically, the vast majority of high school players when they go to college, you're gonna change position. Very likely you're gonna be in a new position. Um, and when that happens, your skill set changes, right? So is that, film that maybe was from your junior year that I watched applicable to how you're going to play at the college level? Maybe not, right? And in fact, probably not, depending on the level of competition, okay? So the first thing we're going to look at is GPA. We're certainly going to watch film if you says put. And keep in mind right now, many colleges are test optional due to COVID. In fact, almost all of them that I know um, are test optional due to COVID. Um, if you if you have your heart set on a school, check. Call your admissions counselor, check the website, find out if this is test optional, because you don't want to learn that uh, you are required to take the SAT uh, after you've applied and they've missed all the testing, right? So make sure to always check with your research. Finding the right fit. So the two big things we have up here are your academic aspirations. Is the school aligned with what you want to do as a career? Is the curriculum aligned with what you want to do? And the amount of rugby, the volume of rugby and the balance 
between academics and your athletic aspirations. Um, I think that campus fit is also an incredibly important piece of this. So not only is are the academics aligned and is the amount of rugby aligned, but do you, do you want to live on that campus for four years? Do you want to be there all four years and uh, have that place be your home? Do you feel comfortable and safe in that community? Do you want to be a part of this place? Right? Do you value what the school values? Do you like the people around you? Do you want to be friends with these people? Right? If the answer is no, maybe go to another school, right? <laughs> but you, you want to want to be there. But academic aspirations and aligned curriculum are really the pinnacle, right? Now, high school athletes, I know you probably don't know for sure what you want to major in, right? You're probably not going to know for sure until closer to your sophomore year. Right? You might have a really strong idea. You might have an academic interest, an area of focus. But do you know for sure you want to be a bio student and you want to spend all of your time in labs or running around the campus in creeks, right, collecting specimens of water? Do you want to spend all of your time focused on the nitty gritty science details? Or maybe you think you want to be a bio student, but really you're interested in environmental studies and you care about the environment and you care about sustainability and the labs and the, the hardcore science, maybe that's not quite for you, right? So when you're picking a program, a school, based on academic aspirations, go in with the awareness that like you're going to learn and grow as a human. You're going to change and develop. And these things are going to be tweaked a little bit, right? So attending a school that has solid health sciences, right? Maybe you think you want to be a nurse, but you realize, oh, you know, maybe nursing at the curriculum is part of what I was thinking about, or I don't you know, want that experience in my career, um, and you move into a bio field. Well, ensuring that your school has broad and strong health sciences in general will make sure that you're able to move into that, um, that major seamlessly. Okay? So academic aspirations should be the first thing that you're thinking of, and could this place be a fit for me based on all of my interests? Really. Next is volume of rugby and training, and that balance with academics. Most varsity programs are going to require, at least in your first year, that you spend some amount of time in either a study hall or an academic support center or working with a tutor. They all vary, right? So I can tell you, at my school, we require a minimum of, of three hours a week working with an organization called CORE. CORE is our academic support services. It stands for Opportunity Resources and Excellence, which is what we call CORE. Um, but you're going to have to spend several hours a week there. So that your class requirement, your rugby requirement, and now you got study requirement, right? Do you want all of those things as a part of your life as an RC athlete? If not, maybe looking at an elevated club or a club program might be a better fit for you. Okay? So volume of rugby. Do you want to be doing rugby every single weekend? Do you want this to be basically another full-time job, right? Do you love it that much? Because it is really a, a very large commitment for action. So I know I just gave a lot of information, and I also know that I'm not Rosalind Chow, and you came in here expecting maybe a little bit of a different talk, um, but I'm, I just threw out a bunch of information. Does anyone have any burning questions or thoughts on things they'd like to add to this conversation? Any big picture questions, smaller questions? Thoughts on the recruiting process in general? Yes. One of the things that I would add, 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 because I know there's a lot of high school uh, athletes in here, is that there's so many different levels like you, you plugged up. Yeah. And not everyone from every one of the high school teams is going gonna, is gonna to make it into a varsity right. program. And as a coach, and I know uh, uh, Oshkosh and Point are here too, one of the things that, that we see is not everybody is is moving on to rugby at at the college right. level. If you love it, if you're here, you, you probably love it, you know. But consider it even at any play, any any level that you are at, whether you're you're choosing Oshkosh, Point, Blackville, NMU, you know, all of them come up and play, you know. And as as coaches and programs, we probably should do a little bit better job of of. 
you know, making ourselves known to the resource uh, and and the student student athletes that uh, that have it because uh, it's a great opportunity because everybody when they go to college, you're a fish out of water and uh, coming and playing rugby is uh, whether it's at the club level or the varsity level or somewhere in between gives you an opportunity to connect uh, with with girls and uh, women around them. So um, kind of keep that in mind as. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of teams, college teams all around the country. Hundreds of colleges have rugby programs from club all the way up to the varsity level, right? So if you want to play after high school, you absolutely can. And if you want to be recruited, you can be recruited. If you want to go to a college and play varsity rugby, you can do it. It's about your communication and working with a coach and finding that right fit. We're having an explosion in varsity programs around the country right now. And I tell you, I know for a fact that if you want to play at the varsity level, it is possible. It's just about you going out and talking to as many coaches as possible, making sure it works for you academically, financially, in terms of all of the other pieces of fit that we talked about. Any other questions about um, the recruiting process, about college rugby in general? Yes? As a high school coach, I know a lot of the players come in never thought about going to a, a higher level to play sports. They just thought they'd try it and be fun. Do you have any tips or pointers for like the high school level? We tell them, I yeah. send them the recruiting things, I send them everything, we tell them you can play at another level. Yeah. What else can we be doing? So them? working with, with folks like Karen, who uh, works professionally as a college counselor <laughs> in rugby, or getting a profile on next space. Right, because uh, every college varsity program is, is you know, getting up and, and running right now is on there and will send you an email, right, if you're interested. So that's the first thing, is you guys have to put your hand up and say, I want to be recruited. Because if you want to be recruited, coaches will reach out to you. Um, the, the next piece is, you know, little things like responding to our emails, right, promptly, in, in, in a timely fashion, and with the information that we asked for, right, Learning how to send a uh, professional email. I got an email, I've got this email a couple times. Um, no name associated with the email at all. Um, doesn't say, hi coach. All it says is, can I have a scholarship? Send. <laughs> uh, the, the email doesn't have, the, the title doesn't have the student's name. I don't know your gender. I don't know what uh, year you are in school. I don't know what you're interested in. I don't know where you are in the country. I know nothing about you. Um, so. A professional email, right? Hi, my name is Blake. I am a senior at Stevens Point in Wisconsin, and I'm really interested in your program. Um, I'm interested in your uh, education program. I've heard good things about it, and can we can I learn more? And I'm going to email you back and say, absolutely. When are you and your parents going to get a Zoom call? Right. So you guys got to put your hand up and also realize that um, this is a professional environment. It's a work setting. Yeah. Yes. I was just going to say something that I found with high school students. If you have teams, sometimes it, <clears throat> there is a disconnect of what they think college rugby is like versus what they're playing. So if you're able to do like a team field trip to a local college game, you say, look, like, we, we played last Saturday. We've got to buy this coming Saturday. Can we go, go watch a club, you know, a, a club team or whatever you can see? And then they can start making a connection of, oh, it's not like the Packers Niners game, you know, like in their mind, they're like, oh, there's no, there's no way I could like call it. And then they see them, oh, yes, it's a big step, but I could do that. I could picture myself on that field. So those are ways to help them make a connection. And then also, um, I've had other teams might have, not even specific to rugby, but college in general, having parents, having assistant coaches, having your trainers just talk about, oh, when, well, when I went to college, you know, I did this, and this was so fun. And like I, I was in a sorority, and I did this, or I just, just talk about what it is versus, oh my gosh, college school for four more years, that sounds awful. You know, but instead of being like, well, when I was in college, I took a class on the history of chocolate. Like, that's pretty amazing, you know, or I took a class on whatever. So then they can start to see, well, that's what we had. It's different than what I'm used to. I will also yeah. say that yeah. many college programs host events that specifically show you what your life will be like as a varsity athlete. We hosted one last weekend called the Varsity Rugby Prep Camp. We treated them like varsity athletes, so this is the expectation. Are you interested in doing this? If yes, let's talk about getting here, right? 
We're hosting a virtual one in a month. Same kind of thing. This is the expectation of being mercy after this point. Can I add one note to that too? As I'm gonna wear my high school, like coach high school going to, is have a realistic talk with the parents of your kids. Because one thing I picked up on is, is having a realistic sense of, are these kids, especially as they get to seniors, actually interested in college? Can their family, is their family looking at college? Are they looking at maybe a two year technical school instead? And that way when you have those talks, it's not just an assumption that everyone goes to college. Um, and I just, from a realistic sense. And then the ones that truly are interested in college or would like to be exposed to more ideas of what college can be like and what Karen just said. And by the way, go to Karen's presentation, Next 11, right here, is really good. Um, and then that way you can kind of fine tune that information as you talk with parents and what information they're supporting and what you're exposing them to. Yeah, building on Karen's comments about attending a game, we've also had a number of programs um, successfully co-op an event where the high school plays at 11 and the collegiates play at 1, or the, you have a local women's club, we have a number of women's clubs throughout the state. Organize a co-op event so you're both playing and you're both benefiting from that exposure to each other. Both sides can benefit from a co-op event schedule. And yes. it's awesome. We've done that with Point, and we have test plays for our high school teachers. So they can see somebody from our club actually learn to play for themselves. Yeah, I was just going to go off like the fact that like maybe if you're not going to go to like a big university that has some varsity program or anything, like maybe there's a program at a technical college that you want to go to, they don't have a team. Reach out to your local like adult teams because even though you are, I mean, as long as you're over 18, you know, you can play with the adult teams even if you're in college, if your college doesn't have a rugby program. I mean, there are some amazing adult women's teams. I mean, not just here in Wisconsin, but I mean, in Michigan, Indiana, I mean, there's some pretty great teams there too. So I mean, you know, aside from having high school meet up with college, I mean, definitely try to reach out to some of the women's teams too. We'd love to have you. Yeah. So last one, because I think we're running out of time. Oh, I just think it's really great. <laughs> I know her team has had um, one of the local university, and those players come and help coach. And how cool is that to have a mentoring ability coaches, but then also for those kids to get to see the college players and college, yeah. you know, play, so. Absolutely. So what I hope, I know that there are a lot of young people in this room, a lot of high school girls and athletes, but I hope you got out of this that no matter what you want in terms of college rugby, if you want to play college rugby, you can absolutely do it. The big question is, is college right for you, right? Because college is not necessarily the next step for everyone. But if you've determined that it is, and you do want to play college rugby, then it is absolutely possible, right? And just seek out help, ask questions, be the director, right, of your own experience, try to find what's the best fit for you. And if you end up in deciding college is not for you, there is still adult women's rugby that you can play, right? Um, thank you guys so much. I know this is a little bit of an impromptu conversation, but I'm really glad um, for the questions and everyone's so up.